so we are live now good evening everyone welcome to the platform of portable research and education foundation india today we have our chairman dr john mukopadhyay sir who is teaching us about few of the uh, challenging cases in orthopedics so over to you sir uh, good evening everybody uh, today we have a series of cases which uh, we've dealt with over a period of time and uh, they have some challenges in the management but what's most important is uh, how you think about how you can deal with those pa uh, patients okay it's not just what you do but how you go about your plan and how do you deal with those cases okay so the first one we'll start with is a young gentleman who was involved in a road traffic accident uh, was a head on collision with a car he had no visceral injuries and he went to another place where he they tried to do a close reduction but were unable to and they put him on skeletal traction and he was transferred to us okay and those were the x rays you can see the x rays clearly or do i need to bring them down a bit okay right quite clear sir okay let's bring them down a bit magnify them a bit so for dnv it will be interactive so whenever the last please answer that okay so these are the x rays okay there's nothing lower down we'll see those x rays later but this is your initial management that you have to think of anyone so uh, pratyush Yeah, uh, Rajan is there. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes. Well, this is a plain data graph of pelvis with proximal uh, femur, showing uh, posterior dislocation of uh, femur and uh, proximal femur fracture. Okay. So, uh, is Mr. Sir, uh, sir uh, no, no. We we just come to the diagnosis. Anyone, anyone disagrees with him? He told about dislocation. So, Subhansu, which type of dislocation it will be? The posterior. The posterior. Okay. So, what is the position in a posterior dislocation of the upper fragment? Sir, flexion. Flexion. So, where does it go? Uh, behind the posterior walls. And then. What is the position? What rotation is it in? In external, external or uh, external posterior dislocation is, is in internal it? rotation. Inter external rotators is uh, internal rotation, sir. So, what is the position of this limb, of the proximal fragment? It is externally rotated, sir. So, what does that mean? And where is it lying? The head. In the obturator foramen. So, what is it? Uh, inferior dislocation. Inferior dislocation. Inferior or anterior? Huh? Anterior. Okay, so it's uh, it's an external rotation. It's gone into the obturator foramen, and the head is lying there, and that is why they were unable to do a close reduction. Okay, so first yes. is the diagnosis. Okay, of course you can get CTs and all, but this patient is in pain. You want to get rid of his pain as soon as possible. Okay, so next. Uh, next, uh, I think Pratyush has not yet answered. Pratyush? Yes, sir. There's some sound coming from the back. Can you stop that? Yeah, I think from Subhansu Saeed. Okay. Sir, yeah, uh, so, Pratyush, tell me. Sir, uh, we will do uh, sir, traction and close reduction. of. So, that uh, someone has already tried and failed. So, you'll try it again thinking that he's not a, he doesn't know how to do it, is it? Yes, sir. And yeah. is there a problem with giving traction? Sir, uh, sir, we can uh, give a sign spin in proximal uh, fragment and yeah, try okay. to reduce it. So that's one way of doing it. You could do that. Or you have to do an open reduction. And these are very often need an open reduction. Okay, so we went in, we did an open reduction of the joint and then we did a... He was on skeletal traction and then we went back a couple of days later 
and it is nailing okay then we took out the skeletal traction because it was stable and uh, anything you would have done differently or you happy with this with this nailing thing uh, today also it was discussed during the round so hansu Nice. So it so you have to, what about a missed neck fracture? Huh? So always think about that. And so for me, it makes sense normally to just put in one screw into the all these nails today have this recon uh, sort of possibility. So you can put one screw into the neck. Huh? In this case, he didn't have one. We are okay, but it's always a embarrassment if later on it turns out to have a neck fracture and the risk of missing a neck fracture is fairly high huh? so here we did this nailing this is the follow up you can see how over a period of time this has gone gone on to unite and he's got a good clinical function okay so this is a good result but you have to plan how you do this try to do it with the minimal trauma that you can cause to the patient and then get your reduction and fixation adequately so that you can start mobilizing the patient okay so now this is a slightly different situation that was an acute situation this is a more chronic situation okay all trauma cases but all in different sorts of presentations okay there's a 33 year old male mechanic by profession he had an injury to his left ankle three months ago was treated in a cast for a month reduction plaster as he was told and he was told it was okay, but when they took out the cast, he was having pain. Uh, three months down the line, he was still unable to walk properly, and he had pain and difficulty in walking. So this was the X-ray that was there. Anyone who wants to comment on the X-rays? I think we'll start from the junior most Pratyus. Uh, this is a, a lateral malleolar fracture, sir. Okay. So, uh, so look at the X-rays carefully. Yeah, just so with he, with syndesmotic injury. With syndesmotic injury. Anything else? Posterior subluxation of. Sir, there is posterior posterior malleolar fracture, sir. Two, sir. Okay, who said posterior subluxation of the talus? Nihal. Okay, yeah, good. So you can see that the talus is shifted back. Okay, so always look at these things. Don't just look at the fracture and decide that. Anything else that you can tell? Someone said posterior malleolar fracture. Yeah? Yes. Okay, so most likely there's a position. This view may not show the entire position of the thing. It could be more displaced or less displaced, but you need to really get that end on view so for that what do you need so what could you do at this stage get a ct scan yeah okay again so there's another x-ray again showing the clear subluxation there now you can see there's a step off this is the x-ray which we took when he came to us those were slight earlier before he came to us you can see there's a step off in the posterior malleolus okay what else is wrong with the fibula? It's impinging over the curtain. Impinging. So here fibula ends here, calcaneus is here. Why should it impinge on the calcaneus? You see the lateral view, fibula ends here, calcaneum yeah. starts here. Okay, so what you need to see is the length of the fibula okay and here you can see where the step off is in the posterior malleolus and how this has gone up and the whole ankle is actually subluxated back here yeah? can you see that yes all of you okay and what else do you look at is the fibula okay so that's the 3d shows you what's wrong with the fibula mm -hmm. What's wrong with the fibula? 
non-union. Non-union? What is it? Non-union or malunion? Proximal. What? So Proximal. just the, this, this is... Shortening of fibula. Yeah, so shortening of the fibula. So in the ankle fracture, the length of the fibula is critical to good reduction of your ankle. Yeah? Yes or no? Yes. 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 Okay, so now this is three months down the line. What would you do? Would you leave it alone? Just give him physiotherapy, intraarticular injections, wait for things to get bad enough, do an arthrodesis, or do an arthrodesis because he's got pain? Lakshman is also there. Lakshman, you can participate. And okay. also, there's a medial malleolar fracture, if you guys have noticed. There was a medial malleolar fracture, but that's united slightly off, but more or less in position. Yeah. We have to revise it, sir. Uh, revise it? No one did anything in the first place. Uh, we have to uh, operate it for posterior fragment and uh, fibular shortening and for syndesmotic injury, sir. And the posterior uh, talus subluxation, we have to correct this. So how will you do it? What will be your, your approach? Which thing you will do first? So I want you guys to start thinking about what you say, okay? And then you, when you say something, you need to have a plan of how you would do that. What approach? What position? So would you do this supine or would you do this prone? Yes, Lakshman. So I would like to um, approach it from the prone position, giving a posterolateral approach so that we could uh, address both the uh, fibula and the posterior malleolus at the same time. So how would you go about it? Uh, initially, uh, if at all there is some callus, I would debride the callus and if at all there is non-union or non-union, it, it might be a malunion so since it might be one and a half month old. So initially... It's three, it's would, three months old. Three, three months old. So initially I would and debride the... the CT, it is uniting here, okay? Yes, sir. So, so it, it is, is malunion of uh, fibula, sir. Yeah. So I would debride the callus because it is malunited and I would like to maintain the length of fibula first, sir. So how will you do that? Uh, either with a bone graft, if at all required. The so bone graft is not going to reduce the non-union no, or the malunion for you, is it? I would debride the ends thoroughly and I would check for the reduction. So how will you do the reduction? But Combination of traction, traction yes. and a clamp. So you gradually, so you you complete, you you have to make sure that the two ends are completely separated. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So you do an osteotomy. You 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 have to go through a posterolateral approach. You have the choice of doing it prone or in the sort of floppy lateral position. That's your okay. choice. Uh, prone has some advantages because here you don't have to do anything anteriorly. Okay, when you have to do anteriorly, the floppy lateral is probably better. Huh? Okay, oh. but here you use, it's all, but we did it in the lateral sort of position because that's what we are comfortable with, but you could do the prone just as well. And you okay. you do the approach through the posterior lateral through two windows. Okay, the one in front of the peronei is for the fibula, and then you go between the peronei and the flexahalysis longus for the tibia. Yeah. Okay. So first you do is you osteotomize the fibula. Okay. You osteotomize the fibula, get it out to length. You don't have to fix it first, but get it out to length first. Then you do an osteotomy of your posterior malleolus along the line of the fracture. Okay. So you put your osteotome in, get the line of the fracture, go through it and then get the fragment down, put a wire across it to hold it in position because you don't want to, once you fix the fibula, it becomes difficult to visualize the reduction here. Okay? So now we've got this down. 
we then go get the fibula out to length. Okay. Fix that. Okay. And then, so how do you, how do you lengthen the fibula? Anyone notice anything on that x-ray? The last one here. Osteotome, we make this space. Liver as used like a liver. And another possibly hole here. So what we do is we put in a screw. We put in the screws in the distal fragment, a couple. And then use a laminar spreader to push against that screw. Okay. When you do that, the fibula will lengthen. You've seen it being done, so you should be able to understand it. Otherwise, we'll have to show it to you in, in a lab or something, okay? And this increases the length of the fibula. Once you've got it out to length, you put in your screws and complete your fixation. Then you go to the back of the tibia, put your buttress plate there, and finally, a screw across the fracture there, okay? So now this is the reduction you've got. Now you can see that the Ankle looks much more congruent. The fibula is out to length. If you do the dime test, you can check that. And then you have to see the post-op x-ray. This is the follow-up. This is at six weeks. You can see he's doing that. This is at three months. He's gradually improving. This is at eight months post-op. Again, you can see a nice congruent joint. Now, just see where the talus is on the tibia. Okay? Can you make that out? Yes. Yes. That the talus is nicely congruent on the tibia. Okay. And this is the eight month follow up. You can see he's able to squat. He's got a reasonable. So these patients will never become completely normal, but they get very close to normalcy. And an ankle joint which will last many years. Well, if you did not do anything, he would end up in an arthrodesis within another four to six months or something like. That. Okay. Because he'll keep subluxing posteriorly and he'll develop osteoarthritis of the ankle. So these you need to catch early and do the corrective measures rather than wait and see how things go. Okay. Right. So next is an interesting case because uh, I don't expect you to know what to do, but it's just interesting because it's one of those unusual presentations. He was actually treated in a metropolitan city, in a big hospital. And for some reason, he was just kept on traction for four weeks and then said he can go home. He kept, came to us at 10 weeks. And that was the x-ray. Okay. So what would you do? Hmm. Sajan is also here. Sajan, you can answer. Okay. Yes, surgeon. First, the 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 head of the femur appears to be uh, uh, inside the acetabulum, sir. First, we'll try to uh, uh, correct the dislocation, sir. Okay, how? Um, ten we it's ten weeks. Yes, sir. Do you think you can pull it out? No, sir. <laughs> Well, we thought we could pull it out. So, I don't know. Sir. <laughs> putting putting okay, a stamp screw in the femur head and giving a traction. Okay. Stamp screw in the femur head and traction. Okay. It might yeah, come so, off. we thought we should be able to do that. Anything else? So, what would you do with the hip fracture? Would you uh, nail that? Yes, sir. A long PFD. You would nail that. How would you enter for the nail? Yes. Huh? Because it's already so close inside, huh? It's bad enough when it's outside to try and get it in. So you're, it's going to be difficult. So, anyway, let's carry on. We decided to do a DHS fixation and then we were hoping to be able to pull out the whole thing out of the or out of the acetabulum. Okay, that was the plan. 
Okay. Those are the CT scans, just in case you want them. Uh, you can see what the position is. So this is what we did. We did a DHS fixation with an additional lag screw. We tried pulling like hell. We put him, it just wouldn't come out. So now what do you do? Anyone? Yes, Subhan, sir. Sorry, sir. Now what, what will you do? Think? You tried pulling it out, it just wouldn't come out. How to reduce this one? Anybody? Lakshman? Uh, if the limb is not possible, we can push it from inside by going through open the, the opening it by the stop or something. Would you do that? But I feel the head is incarcerated because of it is old fracture. The callus might have been stuck near the head, so that it is it is difficult to retrieve it back. Yeah, so the thing is, it's one of those difficult situations where if you try to do it, you're going to be sure that you're going to have a lot of bleeding, okay? And you're not sure how vascular the head will remain, how difficult it's going to be to get everything out of that area and to pull it out, okay? So we actually decided that it is probably safer to leave him alone and then go back and do a total hip at a later stage, okay? So th this was him at five months post-op. He was able to walk by this time. Uh, that was him. He was still stiff. And uh, that was how he was. And then he didn't come back for follow-up. Okay. Till about, about three, four years ago, he suddenly turned up wanting the implants removed. Okay. That was his position at that time, 10 years. So you can see the fractures all healed up. He was working in the Gulf country somewhere. He came back home wanting to get the implant removed. Okay, so what do you think his function was? There's no pain, means sir. No, he's walking on it. He just wants the implant removed. He's got no symptoms. Good. So what would you do? If there is no symptom, then no need to do it. Would you remove the implants? And the patient wants the yes. Sorry about the noise, but but that's that was his function at this stage. Okay, he's able to squat. He's able to sit uh, cross-legged. Able to squat. No, I mean, a little bit of shortening, obviously, but nothing obvious. And he's able to walk and run almost close to normal. Not normal, but I'd say it's normal. So it just shows that not everything needs surgery. Uh, sometimes you may be better off not doing something rather than do something and create more problems for the patient. Okay, so just keep that in mind. There will be situations in time where you may have to decide for conservative treatment based on the risks of doing surgical treatment. Uh, if you think there's some way he can get that surgical treatment safely, yes, certainly refer it. Otherwise, you'll be surprised how sometimes conservative treatment works. Yeah. So, sir, implant removal was done? Or... Would you do it? No, sir. I... <laughs> 10 years down the line, why would I do it? He's got no symptoms. He just wanted to know, do I have to remove the implants? He was working and he was fine. So we said, leave it alone. Yeah, and he was 40 by then. Okay, so this is a 27-year-old. This is a 13-year-old injury, okay? Range of motion 30 to 85 degrees. I think when he was a, he had this injury when he was 14 or 15 years old. He initially was treated conservatively and then his, what he says is his parents said that they couldn't afford the treatment. So he didn't have any treatment and he was managing. So he had about, like I said, 30 to 85. He was able to do work with that hand, but he was having pain. 
whenever he lifted anything heavy. And now he's in IT uh, tech in Bangalore and he wants something done about it. So what would you do? Rajan diagnosis. Sir, medial condyle fracture, old non-united medial condyle fracture. Okay. So what will you do about it? Uh, I'll try to fix it, sir. Okay. How? My body is Huh? Mm -hmm. So you think you can fix it? So How to fix it? 13 years, do you think you'll be able to get this piece down here? Uh, you may need uh, some type of posture, Tommy, but... Uh, So what osteotomy? Okay, anyone want to add something? I think. So this so is again I'm... again a difficult situation. I mean, no, I don't think this 13 years mm -hmm. is kind of an extreme limit. Is the oldest we've done. Two, three years, we've done quite a few, but at 13 years. And this was only because he was keen to get something done. Otherwise, I would be very hesitant to go in and do something. But he was having pain. He wanted something doing. This was his, uh, I think it was his right hand. Or what? So this is what we did. So the thing is, just look at the state of the, we did a molecular osteotomy. We get good access. This was the kind of state of his, bone and cartilage. Uh, what we did was we did an osteotomy to on the lateral side shortened it. This is like a V shortening so that these two things could fit in here and this could fit in there. Okay. So unless you shorten it you will not be able to get it into position. Okay. And then once you do that then you do your fixation with your plates the double plate fixation screws screws across the intraarticular fracture and then a tension band wiring of the ulna. Okay. So what do you think? He'll do well or we've actually made things worse for him? So you could you could so the biggest problem in cases like this is that it's a risk you take. And you have to make an informed, you have to give, get an informed consent from the patient, tell him clearly that at this stage, it's very difficult to be able to assure any good result. Okay. Uh, and uh, he's come back for one follow-up about at about six months down the line. So he's got now, at this stage, now this is many years ago, about four or five years ago, he hasn't come back. But he's got 0 to almost 90 degrees. It straightens up fully. Early at 20 to 85. Okay. And he's got everything healed. And now he's got the strength and no pain. Okay. So I think, uh, so the these last few cases, except for that one hip one, which is an unusual case, is about how you can salvage jo joints in intraarticular malunions. Okay. I think, Till some years ago, people would say that this is too late to do anything. But you can actually do uh, intraarticular osteotomies, get things aligned. And as long as you can get a good congruent joint, you have a chance of getting a reasonably good result and salvaging the joint. Of course, it varies in the lower limb. The time you can't, at 13 years, things would have got too bad in the joint because they are weight bearing joints. In the upper limb, it's interesting because this case just shows you that even 13 years down the line, you may be able to reconstruct a malunion or malunited joint if it is not already arthritic. Now, the reason this is not arthritic was because the medial condyle was moving with the... So if you go back to the original x-ray, whatever movement there was in the medial condyle was taking place 
with this fragment, okay? At the at the non-union, while this side was still okay without any uh, sort of friction going on here. Okay, so have, this is not that every case will have this kind of situation. Okay, so this particular case, there was uh, movement taking place at the non-union here and movement taking place at this place which was fairly congruent. Okay, and there was no movement here. So the olecranon or the uh, olecranon was not getting or the coronoid and the uh, the trochlea etc were not getting repeatedly uh, sort of rubbed against or grated against for the joint to get very arthritic. Although you can see the articular cartilage doesn't look very nice. You still have a reasonably smooth surface to get your fixation onto and then he goes on to do quite well. Okay. Uh, I think we are getting to Pacha. We've got maybe five more minutes. Okay, so some of you have seen this case. Uh, this is a adult with who had osteogenesis imperfecta and multiple fractures. Uh, obviously, did not get treatment, and he came now for treatment. He is short, extremely short. That's how he walks. He's having pain in his legs. And he now wants something doing for it. So what will you do? I think uh, Rajan was there too. So someone Rajan. who was not there. Okay. <laughs> and Pratyush? Yes, sir. Sir, uh, we can uh, sir, we can do a Sikh Kebab osteotomy with okay. uh, sir, I am nailing. So, how do you do a shish kebab osteotomy? Sir, uh, sir, multiple pieces, mein, sir, jahan se, sir, fracture line pass ho raha, along that. Achha, is mein deformity kaha hai? Sir, uh, distal end pe, mostly. So, so, why will you do os multiple osteotomies proximally? So, he, if you look at this, it's almost straight till here this part is deformed and then yes. it's straight here okay so it's this segment that is deformed okay so when yes, you sir. have deformities like this there's one uh, option which is known as the clamshell osteotomy okay so this is teeth which is classical of osteogenesis in perfecta they have poor dentition okay and this is the uh, reference for that. Uh, this is in uh, JBJS Orthopedic Techniques or uh, Surgical Techniques 2010. Okay. And here, what you do is you do the osteotomy above and below the deformity and then just split the middle part. Okay. You split the middle part and then ream through that to allow the two fragments to kind of find its place. So, what it does is you're splitting the tibia, you're cutting it top and bottom, there's one piece there and this will then ream it and then get these fragments into alignment. So that's what we did. You can see how this fragment is split here. It's got a reasonable alignment. Okay, we've got it all down. The nail is a little longer than ideal, but it is okay. It's not hitting the patella. It's just a little, it would have been five millimeters shorter. It would have been ideal, but we couldn't go any further distally because we are right up to the uh, mortis ankle, mortis up there. So if we had gone in anymore, we'd have gone into the ankle. Okay. So mm -hmm. this is the so-called. I think uh, we should. Okay, there's one last last case. Okay, so this is another intraarticular osteotomy. This uh, intraarticular problem, malunion. This is in the calcaneum. Okay. I think uh, someone can read. So anyone? Yes, so one, sir. What type yes, of fracture sir. was this? Uh, 
this time. Sir, so, so depressed fracture, sir. I know, but there are two types of depression. Na? You can have the tongue type and you can have the joint depression type. Both have depression of the articular fascia. So, this isolated one, sir. <clears throat> What does isolated mean? Seems to be a tongue type one. So this is three months down the line. Eh? You think a, what will happen in a tongue type is when this goes down, this will go up. Yes. Okay. So if this is there, it was a tongue yes, type. Huh? When this goes down, this part would have gone up. Huh? Yes, sir. So yes, this sir. is still in the correct place. Huh? So this has depression. gone down. That means there has to be a Fracture here, depression. which is now healed up. Okay. Now, the usual management for these cases has been to wait. And then if things get bad enough, you do an arthrodesis at about a year or so. But we've been trying to do something different. And we now have a quite a long, big series, almost eight or nine cases, where after six weeks, and the oldest one is one year, where we've actually done osteotomies, of this portion, okay, so the intraarticular portion here, not actually through the joint, but through this and derotated this fragment so that the articular surface are facing each other, okay. <clears throat> so that way, so usual approach is a, a extended lateral approach. You take off the lateral wall, and now you can see that we cleaned out the this area to look at the articular facet, eh? and it's facing vertically down instead of being up against the talus, okay? So then we cut this like I showed in the diagram. We have this piece with us. We put it back in place so that it is articulated with the articular surface here. And then we put these lag screws across, okay? And then we put a plate across that way, okay? So that's the fixation. These are two... Uh, con uh, conventional cancellous screws and those are two locking screws. You can see how nicely the joint is recreated. And this is a follow-up at, I think, almost two years, showing a good function, good uh, sort of... Now, again, there's very little literature on this and hopefully we will be writing it up in the near future. So, some of these... Now, you have to choose these cases carefully because not all fractures are suitable for this, but they have to be probably the Sanders type 2 with a large fragment on the lateral side, which we can see clearly that it's depressed even when they come late. Okay, So if you see the X-ray and the CT, you can clearly see the depression even at three months here. Okay, So this is the part that you have to bring against this area. So case selection will be important. And don't try to do it for any case that is malunited, but for certain pictures where situations where you think you can recreate a joint by doing the osteotomy and getting the fragments back in place. Okay, I think we'll stop there. Sir, uh, in this one, sir, uh, sometimes you do the sub, uh, this one, uh, like arthrodesis of subtalar joint. Yeah, so once the joint is arthritic, you have no choice, sir. Okay, so if it's a, uh, or it's a very comminuted fracture, you don't have a choice. So we can combine this with a osteotomy of the oscalsis. Okay, with the older cases, you can, because the heel may be in varus, heel may be uh, uh, sort of malunited in, uh, so you uh, sort of tilting down, so you need to bring it up. Okay, so you can do those corrections, do a calcaneal osteotomy, correct that with, and then, also do the intraarticular correction of the joint. Okay? So we've done that in a couple of cases. Some of them, within three months, usually you can correct the varus by just manipulation or shan screw on the heel or something like that. You can bring it down. After that, it becomes difficult. Then you need to combine it with an osteotomy. Okay? So I think we'll stop there. And if there are any questions, we'll take it. Okay. I'll just check the chat for... Sir, uh, yeah, one question, please. Sir, uh, sure. sir, in hip case for central dislocation, 
असल वाई एस्टेब्लर ऑस्टोटमी एंड फॉलोड बाय मार्टेप्लेटिंग एंड मेश फॉर एस्टेब्लम वेल नॉट ट्राइड फॉर रिमूव पुलिंग द या सो दिस पेशेंट केम टू अस मोर देन 10 वीक्स लेट हां यस सर ओके नाउ इफ दैट हैड कम अर्ली डेफिनेटली वी वुड हैव ट्राइड टू रिड्यूस इट एंड फिक्स इट एट 10 वीक्स we were sure that once we had fixed it and we tried to pull on it it was not coming out easily so it would have been a massive surgical procedure to get it back now if you look at the uh, morbidity of doing something like that and the risks of something more s- s- uh, sort of uh, sin- uh, s- sort of complication complications have happening so the other option is to wait for things to get settle down the head is jammed inside okay and once uh, the fracture is healed we can do a total hip replacement in the socket that is there okay because the head will serve as the medial graft which will stop it from going in yes. okay yes sir so that was the logic of waiting but as it happened he was so functionally good that was not something we expected we expected that down the line we will have to do a total hip replacement but he was in such a good uh, clinic uh, functional position no pain there was no reason for us to do anything so if he gets pain 10 years down the line 15 years down the line definitely we we still have the position where we couldn't have done a total hip replacement uh, maybe that is the only reason why taking out the implant might have been sensible because if he does have a total need a total hip replacement taking out the implant can be a problem having said that it could have been a problem anyway yes sir so yeah yes sir thank you sir now sure. he is 40 year old uh, excuse me sir yeah he is well over 40 yeah sure uh, sir yeah. one question uh, sir in that patient with matlab uh, in the lower limb fracture with uh, dislocation the acetabulum and fracture that fracture seems to be subtrochanteric so what are the reasons you chose dhs because generally what we read is dhs is contraindicated in subtrochanteric type of fracture so don't don't believe everything you read first second yes. thing is it's a, these are not normal cases okay yes okay if you look at this uh, so if we can no sorry i've got i've cut that so if you looked at that case it was a very oblique fracture with a lot of surface there for which way we could compress between the two fragments okay with a dhs and an additional screw okay and plate it we were not going to mobilize him very early because he was a young patient we we're going to keep him on skeletal traction for some time okay so you have time for the fracture to heal third with the head right in there getting access for the nail would have been very difficult okay yes sir. yes sir. so those are the things you need to think of and the dhs works well i think uh, not for it's not designed for subtrochanteric fractures for sure but something like this where you have this surface against that surface you can compress across it the dhs will work well because it is designed for that okay it will heal with a bit of collapse at the most yeah So, because this is not a classical subtrochanteric fracture either let me see if i can get to that x ray then you can see it properly in the second case ha ye wala no it has this So if you can you see that? Yes. So you have that much surface which you can compress against. You understand? Yes. Yes, sir. Okay. Can okay, will you call it subtrochanteric? And yeah. it's yeah, it's not a it's a, like a trochanteric with an extension. Yeah. Yes. So we are able to compress in this. You could have added another screw there if you if really we felt necessary to get more compression. Mm. but you yes. see that it's so th- so th- this is the slight collapse it does okay so that gap reduces completely so you can see this screw has backed out a little bit okay yes and then it goes on to heal 
Okay. Nice scanners, everything. So slightly different situation than a regular subtrochantric fracture. Okay. Yes. Any other question? So I think there is no, no more it's, questions. It's, yeah, it's 7.45. So I think we'll call it a day. Thank you. Thank you very um, much, sir. It was great, sir. Sure. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Okay. Welcome. So, uh, how is that uh, the clamshell osteotomy stitch removal? Ho gaya uska? Uh, yes, sir. Stitch removal kiya tha. Thoda sa wahan se kiya tha, lekin ab dry ho gaya, sir. Suruat mein thoda blood. No, no, that he had a little bit. That yes, I know. Sir. To so wax laga tha. Wax ke baad wo thi. Good. Ek baar so follow up mein maine bulaya, sir. Kal ya parso mein aayega. Thick. Okay. And is he walking? Uh, no, sir. Walker ke saath? Ab chala Dusra pair uska bilkul chota hai, sir. Achha. Oh, isse bhi chota hai. Ah, that's this. Because that this is gets lengthened with the osteotomy. Na? Yes, and sir. And you straighten it, it gets lengthened. Yes, okay, sir. Good. And uska ye implant bhi 250 ka abhi tak available nahi hua hai. 265 sab se minimum bala is me. Okay, we can do something about that. We can cut one and then try. Humorous nail, sir. That will be possible. It would be difficult. We can cut a nail and make some holes. Okay. <coughs> you need only about one centimeter shorter, right? Yes, sir. So two six five ko thoda cut ke, wo holes fir bana lena hoga. But someone has to do it properly. We have to figure out who can do it for us. Okay. Okay. Sure. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay. Bye. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Sure. Welcome.